I have a gigantic backlog of video games. Yeah, it's bad. I know it's bad. Have no fear, friends. This video is about backlog drafting. This is a fun way to gamify your backlog and beat it. We're going to talk about why it works, how to play it, how it compares to backlog golf, which is another way to gamify your backlog. But if you don't know what a backlog is, watch the video at the top of the screen. Finally, in the description, I've included a link to the official rules for backlog drafting as well as timestamps for the video. So let's get started. I didn't actually coin backlog draft. The history of this game is that it comes from a, a podcast that is no longer running called the Everyday Gamers. So I've played in one draft uh, based off of that, and it was super helpful for me in getting my backlog taken care of. So I understand how it works. Think of a backlog draft sort of like the NBA draft or the NFL draft. I, probably many of you don't care about that not at sports, but the idea is you get to see a list of exciting new prospects, speculate and chat about their pros and cons with friends, and then you vote on the games you're most interested in your friends playing. So it's exciting, it gets everyone on the same page, and at the end of your season, you wanna be the player with the most games beaten. Plus, you get bonus points if you 100% are platinum a game. So all rules for a backlog draft reinforce two ideas. One, playing specific games chosen by your group, and two, decreasing your backlog. Here's practically what a backlog draft would look like. First, determine how many people will play. This could be five people, 30, whatever's manageable. Then you choose the length of your season. I recommend three months because you might want to play new games or a new season after you finish. You don't want to be stuck with the same games forever. Next, choose how many games you'll play during your season. So uh, now this is a matter of taste, but I recommend like two to three games per month in your season. So it really comes down to whether you're a bunch of high schoolers or college kids with lots of time on your hands, or if you have kids and maybe you don't have that much free time to game. Now is when things get personal. First, write a quick self inventory of personal gaming habits. I, I know that sounds cheeky, but you'll thank me later. You're gonna write like one or two paragraphs about your gaming tastes, a couple of your favorite games, that kind of stuff. Now things start to get juicy. Choose games for the draft for people to vote on. So if you have a small backlog, like 10 or so games, go ahead and make a list of those, post it to your Discord, Messenger, whatever you use to talk to your friends. Uh, if you have a big backlog like me, <laughs> no one wants to look through your 500 games. So pick like 20 or 30 games from that list that you're interested in playing and, and uh, make that list available for people to see. And then finally, the draft. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick a time when most people in the draft are free and you're all gonna vote together. So not everyone has to be there. It's best if they are, you can mess with each other, have fun, that kind of crap. If someone can't be there at the time you're starting, they'll need to vote ahead of time. So in order to vote, you first need to determine like what's the order of like, we'll vote for this list, this list, whatever. You can do it alphabetically uh, by people's names. You can do it by birthdays, whatever weird starting player fetish you have. And then uh, starting with that first player, everyone else reads that player's self inventory and looks at their game list. And then everyone gets to vote for three games on that player's list. You're trying to read their list, look at their games, think about their personality, how well you know them, and then you're gonna to try to vote for the games that you think that they'd wanna play. After everyone votes, move on to the next player and then repeat this process until everyone's gone. So once the draft is over, you're gonna count up the votes on your draft list. So uh, the games that you're gonna play over this season of backlog draft are the games with the most votes on your list equal to the agreed upon number of games. That was a mouthful. So basically, if you're playing six games this season, the six games on your list with the most votes that people voted for, those are the six games you're gonna play. It's, it's really pretty simple. It sounds more confusing when I explain it. So now the season officially starts. So the way you score points is very simple. Every time you beat a game on your list, you get one point. That's it. And as a bonus and to incentivize extra play, every time you 100% or platinum or whatever, a game, you get an additional one point. So when the season's over, the player with the most points wins. You just add up the games you beat, any games you 100%ed, whatever, most points wins. That's really it. It's pretty simple, but let's talk about some pros and cons. So one, backlog drafting is a conversation starter. Uh, much like postseason professional sports or when you're favorite esports player drops from an org. It's like, where are they gonna go? There's a lot of drama with backlog drafting. It, there's fun storylines. So one player might pound through three games in a week because they have a lot of free time. Everyone else is like, oh, I'm going to lose this draft. So people have to fight it out, get the most games beat in a season. That's exciting. It leads to a lot of updates uh, and fun conversations. Two, it's simple and short. So unlike backlog golf, a backlog draft is dirt simple. You don't have to worry about edge case rulings, you can just play. And if you beat a game, you get a point. It's very, very simple. For every pro, there's a con. So the first con is you can get stuck. So you can avoid this if you pick your list smartly with lots of variety, but it's possible to end up with a draft list full of games from a single genre. So you might be playing like 
10 JRPGs and maybe that's not what you wanted to do. Well, maybe you shouldn't have put those games on your list. Or maybe those are your favorite types of games, who knows? But it's up to you to create a good initial list that doesn't have like four copies of Skyrim on it. And the other downside is backlogs are not created equal. Really, when you gamify your backlog with other people, I just recommend doing it for bragging rights. Sure, you could have a pot of like, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever, winner takes it. But ultimately, some people have a lot of short games. Like I could easily put together a list of six games that are two hours long each. When other people have like 30 hour AAA games. So some people are destined to have really easy to beat backlogs, other people aren't. That's just how it is. And that's part of the beauty of backlog games. It helps us enjoy the games we own, gets us to experience a lot of gaming we weren't even aware existed. So that concludes the explanation for how to play this game. If this is of interest to you, if it's exciting to you, like please subscribe. I'm going to continue to do more backlog based content. Um, hopefully that's helpful for people. In addition, depending on when you watch this video, at least in the first three months of its publishing, we're currently playing a backlog draft. Um, we're probably gonna run more in the future. Uh, so stop by our Discord. Uh, that's where we run those things. Um, looking forward to hearing from people and uh, thanks.